Hi, Rick the Radio Guy here with my next installment in the Simplifying and Demystifying Cisco IPIC series. We're actually going to configure a brand new 481 system from scratch. So the very first thing we're going to do is we'll connect to the IPIC server. I'll put in my username and my password. Yeah, that's a long one. Now, the very first thing we need is a valid license file. These are some of the things you'll want to make sure you have before you try to start configuring Cisco IPICs for the first time. Of course, you want to know the IP addresses of the uh, IPICs machine and the UMS. You want to have a location defined, and location really to us means multicast domain. It doesn't refer necessarily to a specific geographic location. It's really a multicast domain. Uh, I've got a little note here to set my security parameters very low since this is a demo system and I want to use four character usernames and passwords without special characters. I've got a list of the channels I'm going to assign with their names and the multicast addresses along with the port. And I actually use a separate even numbered port for every channel. Third octet of the IP address, I put that in the third octet of the multicast address. And then I go, in this case, 1 through 10 for my channels, and I just multiply by 2. So port 1 is 21002. That really goes back to some legacy Windows things with sockets and ports get opened uh, in Windows Media um, for our IDC. Then I have an additional multicast pool that will assign for the things like the VTGs and the incidents. I've got a list down here of my users I'm going to uh, install with their usernames and passwords and some PIN numbers for those who want to be able to demonstrate the IP phone piece of it. All right, let's go get that license file. So I'm going to select Browse. I'm going to grab this uh, 48250 full file to, to open it. Now I'm going to upload it to the machine. That happens quickly. And then I apply it. And it's going to go off, run the license manager script here, and very soon I'll see that it's been applied, and I'll see uh, a valid number of ports come up. If you need to add more ports or features, that's really simple. You can simply buy the features you need, and you get another license file that has the additional features that you want to support your installation. So you can see that mine is up and ready to go now. I have a valid license file. What the next thing I always do is I go over here to configuration and I set a location because so many things are dependent on location. Remote is something you'll use for coming in if you, you are not within the multicast domain. We'll make SIP connections from the IDCs. I'm going to call my location name IPIX demo because it makes sense to me. And just to be complete, I'll fill it out here. I fixed demonstration system. I now have a location set. The next thing I have here is under administration, we're going to go to options, and I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to disable this RMS comparator because I'm now using the UMS, not the RMS. If I was configuring call manager, I could put that in over here, and we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but what I'm really interested in here is going and setting my passwords to ridiculously low security limits, four-digit passwords, four-digit pins, no special characters. And once again, you would never, ever do this in the real world. No user password exploration, expiration, no user account lockout. I can click save, and I've now made my system ridiculously easy to, uh, to get in. A couple other screens here where you can configure things like SNMP and the behavior of the IDC client. We're not going to go do that right now. Let's go back over here and revisit our configuration tab, and we'll bring up my list here. And I have a list of channels that we want to configure now. So let's do the first one. And it's going to be this multicast of, uh, or pardon me, 239.192.40.1, port 21002, which will be my UHF radio. 
which goes in channels because we're doing the analog interface. So we're going to come over here. We're going to click Add. I'm going to call it UHF, short name UHF. There are places that's used, UHF radio. Is it a secure channel? No. Do I allow associating to users? Yes. Do I allow it in V2Gs? Yes. The type is multicast. The location, there's that location, I fixed demo, 239.192.40.1, port 21002, and we're going to go with our G711 codec for best audio quality. Now, I just have this in the systems ops view because I'm not showing ops views. That's an advanced feature we can talk about later. I'm going to click Save here. Now, if I want to, I can configure some IDC properties here, like which region I'd like to put it in or if I'd like to have, it, have a color. So let's say that the UHF channel is going to be green. Later on, I can associate that to users also. So there we go. I've got a channel built. I've got a location set up. Let's go over here and make uh, another channel here so we can do a little bit more with it. We'll add in our VHF channel. And I just do this so I can show UHF, VHF, interoperability. Could be anything you're doing here. And once again, it'll be a multicast channel. This will be dot up. We have to remember to set our location every time. This will be dot 40, dot 2, 210004. G711 codec, save, and let's see, we've used our green channel, so why don't we make this one here, no, we'll make it blue, and save that one. So now, if I come back here and I look at my channels, I actually have two channels in the system, and now let's go add our UMS. So I'm going to add a UMS. UMS name very creatively is going to be UMS. Oh, let's let's get even more fancy. We'll call it demo um, underscore UMS. And I'm going to say that that is at 10.10.3.13. The location is I fix demo. The password. It's the same as this one. Doesn't have to be, but once again, it's a demo system. And I leave the config port and SIP connecting port. And this may take a few minutes. We're off to do some configuration. And right now, there's a handshake taking place. There's some trust uh, going on where we're doing some certificate exchanges to make sure that these two devices should be talking to each other. It'll come back here in a couple minutes. It can take time. Now, at this point, we are 10 minutes into this IPIX installation, and we actually already have channels up, uh, the UMS being configured. So we'll come back, and as soon as this is done, we'll go configure some users, and we'll be uh, rocking and rolling. Okay, we're back. That took about another minute and a half. So now let's go over here. Everything up here is black, which is good. The system is in standalone mode. It says HA status is active, although I do not have it set up as an HA pair. And that's actually okay because it's saying that it's exchanging HA heartbeats. So if I want to make it a pair, it's not a problem. And it shows the UMS is enabled. This is all really good. If you happen to see any of these turn red during your installation, it means that you have a trust issue between the two machines. But since this is all black, that's great. Let's go back up here. Let's build my, my, my multicast pool. And we're gonna add some multicast addresses. And from our sheet, you'll recall that we are going to do from 10.10 .10 to 40. go 40.11. And I'm going to add, I'm gonna add 50 addresses. There we go, the multicast pool is now built. 
you can see my UHF and VHF radio coming off the top of the pool here. Let's go add a user. Okay, come over here, and we're going to add a user, and we're going to call the user, in this case, Rick. First name will be Rick. Last name will be the radio guy. I'm going to put that R in there. Password will be Rick. Confirm it as Rick. And just for my own administration here, I like to actually list on my demo systems the password and the PIN I'm going to be using. Uh, and if we go back and look at our list, the PIN is going to be 7425, which on your own dialing pad spells Rick. So once again, making it ridiculously easy. We go over here, we go to the dial login section. I hit the tab here that says IPix demo. I put in my 7425 for my pin. 7425, 7425, save. Okay, now let's associate some channels to the user Rick, so we can actually talk on something. We're going to say we're going to add some channels. I'm going to go to the system ops view, say go. I'm going to select both of these channels, say OK. Rick now has two radio channels he can talk on. Very last thing, let's go over here to IDC management. It says an IDC installer has not yet been generated. That's because we haven't generated one yet. So we know we're going to do it on this machine. We're good at these ports. We want it to be version 481. We're going to click Save. There we go. Now we have an IDC installer. And guess what? We have now, in uh, not an incredibly long amount of time, under 15 minutes, installed IPIC, set up the location, set up the uh, security, built our multicast pool, put in two channels and a user. Essentially, we're done. The rest of it is now just adding more users and channels to the system. Okay? Not bad. 15 minutes. Let me show you a couple quick tricks. Let's take this radio user here called Rick. Let's copy him. This will save me from having to do a few additional things. Change the username here. We're going to make it Dano. And change that to Dan. And we're going to make his password Dano. Dano, Dano, you notice that we have the same ops views and the same capabilities here. Let's make Dano able to do everything on the system. We'll give him the capability of all. We'll hit save. We'll go over here to the dial login. Notice it picked up the location. We'll put in his 3266 dial login. 3266266. Save. And if we go and look at associations, we'll notice that he inherited those associations from the user called Rick. All right, so that's just a little two minute time saving tip that you can use. Once again, Rick the Radio Guy showing you the 15 minute installation of Cisco iPix.